prepare yourself before you scare yourself. Okay. Hello, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, good night. Today, we're going to be talking about what to expect when you're expecting to have a data science interview. We all crave that delicious feeling of seeing that pretty little email pop up from a recruiter saying that your application is moving forward to the next stage. Sidebar, if all you've seen are rejection emails coming into your inbox, then check out the first two videos on my channel and we'll fix that right up for you. If you are getting past that first step and you're getting to the interview stage, it's important to know how to finish the job so that you can start the job. Having been on both sides of the data scientist interview many, many times over the past few years, I've become somewhat of an expert on rejection, but more importantly, on the structure, content, and expectations of data scientist interviews. The good news is there isn't a crazy amount of variation, and once you do a few of them, they do get pretty predictable. The information I'm sharing in this video is based on what I've personally seen happening in data science interviews right now now across large tech companies, small tech startups, banks, and other large retail corporations. By the end of it, I hope to leave you knowing exactly what you can expect, how you can prepare, and how to give those interviewers the answers they want to hear. So without further ado, let's dive in. When it comes to the interview process, the big question is how long is this whole thing going to take? It usually involves several interviews and assessments with several different people at the company. Usually no less than three and more often closer to 10. Lots of time that I would rather be spending on TikTok, but alas, c'est la vie. While some companies are more thorough than others, the data science interview process will definitely contain one or more of each of the three data science interview flavors. And these three flavors are your recruiter screen, a technical screen, and an on-site interview. Join me as I dive into each component with great detail so that you know how to own that interview each and every single time. Let's go. First up, we have the recruiter phone screen. The purpose of this interview is mainly to confirm that you are in fact a human being who sounds as good as you look on paper. It is typically a 15 to 30 minute phone call where the recruiter will tell you a bit more about the company and the role and also ask you some basic questions to get a little bit more comfortable presenting your profile to the hiring manager for consideration. They want to make sure this role is a good fit for you at a high level. So they may ask you things like your interest in the company and the role, your career journey so far, what you're working on now, what you've worked on in the past, and what you're looking for for the future. High level about your experience with the major tools that are used, such as Python or SQL or big data, uh, whatever is the main tech stack at the company. They will also likely ask you about salary expectations. Don't let this catch you off guard because it can happen this early on in the process. So make sure to do your research beforehand and have an answer ready to go. When I was interviewing, we would ask this question right off the bat uh, for two main reasons. The first one is to make sure that our salary range is competitive. And the second one is to see if we can afford that candidate. So a lot of the time, this first recruiter phone screen won't go much further than this. However, sometimes you might get a mini version of a more formal interview. So you may get asked a few small, quick technical screening questions that the hiring manager passed to the recruiter, or you may get asked a few behavioral questions. Later in the video, I will share the most common technical and behavioral questions I hear asked at data science interviews, so make sure to stay tuned for that. At the end of this interview and most of your next ones, you'll be given the chance to ask your own questions about the company. When you're trying to figure out what questions to ask, don't think too much about what is gonna sound good, what's gonna make me seem like I'm really interested. Genuinely think about what your needs are and what you care about for this role. Most importantly, make sure to ask when you can expect to hear back and what the rest of the recruitment process and timeline looks like. 
if you get rejected after this recruiter phone screen, even though you felt like you were really vibing well with the recruiter, don't be discouraged. They probably did like you and it's probably just that there were more qualified candidates to show to the hiring manager. And what I like to recommend is to keep in touch with that recruiter. Make sure that you ask them if it's okay to reach out to them if you see another role at the company that looks good. Um, I've personally done this several times and it's worked and it's allowed me to expedite myself through the typical recruitment process because the recruiter will just skip you right to the part where uh, you're speaking with the hiring manager or doing a technical screen or wherever it is that you left off in the process. So do it, it works. Next we have the technical screen. <laughs> This one comes in many different shapes and sizes, but no matter what the purpose of it will be to test if you can walk the walk after you've talked the talk on your application. This step will be testing your coding skills in some way and or your data science knowledge. The coding part is definitely tested more often in the technical screen phase than the data science knowledge, but I have seen a combination of both. Most often the technical screen will be in a phone call or a video call with another data scientist, an engineer, or some technical member of the team, and it will usually be a live coding test. Typically, it's a problem to solve using Python, but depending on the role, it could be um, a challenge with SQL as well. Either way though, if you're actively applying and interviewing for data science positions, it's a good idea to keep both your Python and SQL skills sharp. Coding at least a little bit every day can really help exercise those coding muscles, familiarize you with common functions and common problems that are asked, and will really go a long way to get you past this part of the interview process. I will link my favorite coding practice sites in the description below. They've helped me a ton because the questions that they ask and the problems that you go through solving are super similar to the ones that I've seen asked at technical interviews. In addition to coding practice sites, you can practice in other ways. If you're working now as a data scientist, then you probably don't need to do additional practice because you're probably doing this kind of stuff at work. Otherwise, you can contribute to open source or you can work on your own project. It really doesn't matter what you're doing as long as you're coding every day. Keep those muscles sharp. We all love a strong brain. There are tons of resources online for how to crack the coding interview. I'll share some of my favorite ones in the description below. But the main thing to remember here is that they want to see the way that you think, the way that you solve problems, and what you would be like to work with. A lot of the time companies are really nice about it and they'll even let you use online resources as you code so you can look up documentation if you get stuck. Just make sure to talk through everything you're doing and communicate your ideas clearly and you should be good to go. In addition to or instead of a live coding challenge, you may get a take home assignment to work on during your own time as a part of the technical screen. I've seen this in two different forms. So I've seen it in the form of a timed quiz that you can start whenever, you'll just have a time limit and it's multiple choice questions that are testing data science theory. And also there might be a coding component um, but this is pretty rare. I don't see this too much. More often what I do see is a take home data assignment that is not timed, but you probably have a deadline to complete it. And this would be something pretty similar to what you'd be working on in a typical work day. As a data scientist, we spend most of our day analyzing and manipulating, manip manip manipulating, oh my God, <laughs> manipulating data. So what a lot of companies like to do is test how good you are at doing this by giving you a data set, a business problem that's associated with it and asking you some questions about it that will involve you having to really dig into the data. They're trying to test your data related problem solving skills, your uh, business solution design and your coding skills. Usually an assignment like this will be some kind of use case related to uh, the business context of what the company does. So make sure to research the domain of the company and research common problems and themes that come up and be prepared to answer business related questions. The best way to prepare for something like this is on Kaggle.com. I've mentioned it before, a great website. Here companies will share uh, their data sets or data sets that look like their own data and they will provide actual business problems associated with the data and you could see how people solve them and you could also try to solve them yourself. So I will link that in the description below. Once you complete the recruiter and technical screening processes, you will move on to what is referred to as the on-site interview. 
This is typically the final set of interviews that you will do before the decision is made. Because we are in 2020, yikes. A lot of these are not actually on site anymore. They're still done through video calls. But back in the day, this would be when you'd be invited on site to see the office and to meet some of the members of the team in person. For a data science role, this set of interviews will typically be highly technical and will focus on problem solving and business thinking. But they will often have a little sprinkle of behavioral and value-based questions as well. This is also where you would likely meet the hiring manager for the role. There are three main components that typically come up during this interview state. You have more coding, um, potentially, maybe not. Next one is problem solving. This would be a problem similar to one that you may work on as a data scientist at the company. Here is where they want you to show off your solution design skills, your data science expertise, and also your domain expertise. Here, it's really important to focus on communication. Structure your response as well. Think through them before you start talking and make sure that you're following a clear uh, path or train of thought as you speak and explain your ideas. Now, the third component is a deep dive on your resume and or your projects. So make sure that you know your resume really well going into the on-site interviews. Make sure that you'd be able to speak thoroughly and clearly about the most interesting projects that you have on there. Usually interviewers will let you pick one or two projects to dive in on, but of course be prepared to talk about any of them. They may just pick their favorite. Here it's important to really know the technical aspects well. Know how to explain the algorithms that you've used and why you chose to use them, how you knew to test the hyperparameters, what the results were, how you knew to evaluate the success of your model, any challenges you faced during the project and how you solved them, how you tackled them, how you worked with a team or by yourself. As always, make sure you don't leave the interview without knowing when you can expect to hear back and what the next steps are. So now that you know what to expect in the data science interview process, I want to share some of the most common questions I hear being asked, both technical and behavioral. <laughs> Now, starting with behavioral, there are so many places where you can find a bunch of questions that are commonly asked by recruiters, but these are the ones that I have seen come up multiple times in data science interviews. Next, the technical questions will be focused on applying machine learning theory and statistical testing theory and just some other data science fundamentals. Most of the time, they will not test you on anything super crazy or complicated. Most people don't want to torture you. If they do, you probably don't wanna work there anyway. So you don't need to focus on knowing every little detail of how every algorithm works, but make sure you know the data science fundamentals really well. Generally speaking, the data science theory questions that are asked will fall into those that I'm putting up on the screen. If it's a very general role, the questions will probably be general, but if there is a specific data science function like natural language processing or deep learning or whatever that will be a focus in the role, understand that part really well. All right, friends, one final tip I want to leave you with before I go is, what's my tip? Make sure you ask for feedback when you're done with the interview process for a role. Whether you get the role or not, this is a great way to figure out what gaps you have, what you should focus on for the next one, and how you can improve yourself in general as a candidate. Every interview you have will prepare you a little bit better for the next one that comes around. So treat each one as a learning opportunity. Don't put too much pressure on yourself and just know that no matter what, you're getting better as a data scientist just by doing the interview. When the rule you're meant to be in comes along, all of your hard work and time spent interviewing will pay off. So please just be patient, work hard, know the basics, know your stuff, and you will get there, honey. I promise. That is it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I don't know what this thumbs up thing is, but I guess we're doing that now. If you got any value out of this video, please let me know. I like compliments. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Pretty please. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like to watch me blab about. And until then, I bid you farewell. Go crush that data science interview. Bye.